a customer centric company uh, how are you helping clients and customers in uh, prime times like these yeah so i think um so as i just mentioned right so today um a, every uh, consumer business whether it's a startup or large enterprise um i mean so they i mean we have seen that i mean across the data we have seen there are some verticals which are um, heavily impacted which are there are some verticals which are uh, moderately impacted negatively and then there are good number of verticals which are also impacted positively with the phenomenon right so um and um i think um, i mean i just did a town hall a couple of weeks back itself with all of our global customer success function and uh, the we just want to be as helpful as we can uh, we are trying to do a more frequent um, catch ups with our customers understanding how their uh, business has kind of how their business goals are evolved now and uh, providing uh, proactive solutions in terms of how they can think about um, drive i mean think about customer engagement in this current scenario right so i think uh, this varies against again by different verticals for verticals which let's say travel vertical or hospitality vertical which are badly impacted and where their fundamental business itself is not running um i think uh, we are giving solutions in terms of hey you should probably use this time uh, one is um, instead of trying to drive convergence anymore which don't happen so try to kind of engage customers by sharing information by showcasing empathy to your users um and sharing information right so so that is one thing that it, some of our customers are doing actively um and and uh, one of the things that everyone is also doing is to invest into capabilities at this point of time right um i mean many times when business is running you are always busy with the next promotional sale or next sale and you are just yeah. kind of continuously running on a treadmill so this is a time probably to invest into core uh, assets or capabilities um uh, um like customer engagement customer retention and things that you're not doing on the front so there are multiple projects that our customers keep do uh, kind of sometimes get deprioritized so this one uh, we we get we get them to invest into that uh, investing into uh, marketing automation or, uh, or some of these core uh, gaps that are there in the current stack and that is one thing that every consumer business can think about as well mm-hmm. uh, um i think uh, yeah so from our side we are just we are uh, uh, we are sharing i mean we we are we have even had a blog post uh, you probably might have uh, on our yeah. website where we are sharing all the uh, best practices in terms of what other companies are doing because every company is asking us hey, hey our business is impacted what should we be uh, doing should we be engaging customers and and if that is a case how should we be engaging so we are sharing a lot of best practices from other companies uh, with their approvals uh, mm-hmm. and what they are doing with other customers and that is something uh, we are trying to play uh, middleman here and then kind of sharing the best practices across the customer segment um yeah and um, i i think hope, hopefully i think uh, the lockdowns will uh, end and then uh, i think uh, the businesses will continue to kind of uh, operate uh, so that they can actually kind of still uh, start things moving Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, so uh, my last question, uh, you know, essentially on the different segments, different verticals that Moengage is on, right? So, so with partners across several uh, verticals on board, what impact have you noticed, you know, in terms of uh, various business segments? Uh, for instance, I'm guessing that education is probably going up. You know, travel is obviously you know yeah. doesn't exist anymore for the next few months. So. Uh, so are, are, are you seeing similar segment you know yeah. behavior across different segments yes yes i mean uh, in uh, i think we have published some of the reports on that on this on this as well okay uh, and, and we work with all the grocery companies with basket super daily and uh, fresh to home and multiple mm-hmm. others so all of them have picked up uh, in terms of demand um and uh, obviously they have they have had some of the supply challenges but uh, they have picked up significantly over the last 3 uh, to 4 weeks um and uh, other verticals like music uh, i mean we work mm-hmm. with gana wink music and uh, others as well uh, the all the ott ott segments like tata sky atl extreme and others so all the ott music entertainment has speak as has has grown um probably like anyway from probably like 25 to 30% at least um and um 
verticals like uh, healthcare or pharmacy and so on have, have also grown. Um, so these are all the positive verticals like, um, and uh, gaming is another vertical that is again going, it's been positive. Um, the verticals which are uh, moderately impacted, probably um, highly negatively impacted have been like more like travel and hospitality because yeah. they, are, they are not just impacted by lockdown, but they are just impacted overall by the border restrictions as well. Um, and uh, the vertical like offline retail, uh, mm -hmm. so we, uh, we work with like Future Group, Landmark and others. The offline retail is something, uh, I mean, mainly impacted because of the lockdown restrictions. And uh, once those are uh, lifted, I think that will uh, also scale, uh, should kind of resume. Uh, transportation is another vertical, uh, which has been impacted mainly because of the lockdown uh, significantly, like the likes of Ola, Zonka, Yulu and others. Um, and they should also kind of resume to some extent uh, with the lockdown restrictions being coming down. Uh, financial institutions is one vertical, which is uh, undergoing a lot of digital transformation and digital adoption. So that is going positive uh, with the, all the branches going uh, off um, and uh, so they, they, that, that is one vertical we are also seeing a lot of uh, positive growth uh, as well. So, and uh, different geographies again have different uh, uh, restrictions, level of restrictions mm -hmm. and the e-commerce is actually growing there. Um, and we work with the three out of the top four e-commerce marketplaces there and uh, all of them are growing pretty well. Um, so yeah, it again varies with uh, some of these different geographies like different uh, results with the US and uh, Europe as well. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so let's take the last question. As a founder, uh, you know, what were some of the key learnings, evolution in thought process uh, you have gone through? Mm -hmm. You know, what is, so, so given this, that, you know, we are in 2020, you know, in the middle of COVID-19 situation, what do you think some of those experiences yeah. or thought processes will help the other founders? Hmm. Uh, I think uh, one is basically uh, definitely understand to building a strong leadership team. Um, and um, because uh, many times as founders, we like to zoom in on, zoom in, in a lot of things. Uh, so you should have a, I mean, and that's something I've been continuously evolving on my friend as well is mm -hmm. you should have it. You should keep evolving in terms of where you should be zooming in and where you should be zooming out uh, in terms of the areas. Um, and uh, that's, uh, so that's that. And the, and that can only happen by building a strong leadership team uh, who can actually completely own and take those functions very well. Um, then the second is uh, more in terms of uh, having a strong goal setting framework um, hmm. and which can be scaled across the organization. So we are a company, we believe a lot in transparency uh, and, um, and we, we use OKRs, uh, we use the OKR framework to set common goals again across the company. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's hard to kind of get that okay process running. Uh, but I think, um, so we have been able to kind of, uh, we've been doing it for more than three to four quarters now. And, um, and on a quarterly basis, we, we do this okay planning, um, and, uh, across products, CES, sales and so on. And so that every team also has clear, uh, visibility in terms of what are the goals that as a company that you are looking to achieve. Um, and, um, and also it's also important that because, uh, from the, particularly from protein engineering standpoint, I mean, for us, it's a uh, almost half of the team, um, um, which comprises of protein engineering. It's hard to assess what has been the progress, right? So a, having a good OKR framework and uh, making them think in terms of goals rather than activities yeah. uh, is helps you because instead of uh, thinking of rolling out a project, uh, you should basically have OKR of like rolling out a product with and drive adoption of right from 10 customers, right? So would that keeps uh, everyone towards those kind of a more um, object oriented goals. So, so those are some uh, key pieces. Um, and I think having a strong finance function is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so I have my, and unfortunately it's very important in the, in the, in this current COVID world, uh, have a strong finance function and have a strong CFO who can actually, um, we keep you on the ground because as founders, we always are very optimistic <laughs> and yeah. uh, we, uh, we sometimes only focus on the output goals, which is revenue goals and, uh, but not really looking, putting a very granular thought at the cost side of things. And uh, that's the reason we need to really have a strong CFO who can keep you really grounded. 
um, and uh, help you kind of focus on the leading indicators and uh, and and efficiency, right? So it's really important. That, and particularly as SaaS companies, we need to have strong economics in place. Uh, and uh, and and, um, and and every for every SaaS, every company, uh, <laughs> uh, irrespective, right? So so those are some of the uh, key uh, learnings. And uh, one of the things I would say is that probably. Um, try to always have ground reality of the business, mm -hmm. uh, which means uh, you need to um, kind of speak to your customers yourself, uh, speak to the teams yourself, and then have a un ground understanding of the ground reality than just looking at high level log, I think is also helpful. Um, one thing that's it is something that I would like to add for us that has been really valuable is building a highly uh, customer obsessed culture. Yeah. Um, so I think today every business, whether it's a consumer business or a SaaS business, all uh, every business need to be um, uh, highly obsessed about their users or customers, um, and um, and 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 that's and that's important and 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 that kind of being, building that kind of culture within your team uh, takes time and uh, that's something I mean we have kept it right from day one. Uh, both us, both uh, Yashwant, my co-founder, and I, we ourselves are. Uh, um, in kind of look at a lot of customer tickets, um, what customers are uh, actually kind of like, and and I spend time meeting uh, customers regularly. Um, so having the ground reality understanding of what what are the gaps that you have mm -hmm. and what are the problems that you are challenges that you are facing but you're not aware. So I think it's really helps you to kind of change the strategy and uh, change the things much f faster, uh, and uh, that helps everyone, right? And I think this COVID world one advice is obviously everyone, um, I mean, with everyone now cutting down the marketing spends uh, and retention and engage, customer engagement becoming a very important aspect of the business. Yeah. So, and it's, it's even more important to build a customer obsessed culture. Yeah.